All righty. I missed, I missed it there. I, I, I didn't time that well coming out of a, the jazz. I'm sorry. I'm used to having the dubstep intro. What's up, everybody? Good to see you. Give me a thumbs up uh, if you can hear me, see me, and please let me know how the microphone sounds. It's been a little low recently, so I've kind of cranked up the volume just a little bit to try to accommodate that. So just let me know. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of fun people in the house tonight, and uh, I'm going to say hey to all of you. Some people were here in here pretty early. Uh, Chris, what's up, man? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, 500, pretty crazy. It seems like yesterday I was doing live streams for eight people, and I had like 14 subscribers. So this is, this is really cool. Good to see you, and thanks for that email, man. I just saw it right before I got on here, so I appreciate that. You're going to go far, kid. <laughs> thanks, Trev. I am uh, somewhat recovered from last night. Somewhat. Will says, hey, hey. Um, let's see here. Good to see you, Hendo. Emily says, have fun, kitties. Uh, Uta says, uh, congratulations. Thank you, and I love the drum emojis in there. That's awesome. Uh, Sherry's in the house. Hey, all, congrats, Cameron. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I know you were tuning in last night for some of Trev's stream as well. Aiden says, I'm so proud of my sweet baby boy. Thank you so much, Aiden. <laughs> and your comment about the Jason Calori school of thumbnail making was hilarious. I, th I thought that was really funny. Um, and then I got flamed above that post or trolled above that post from somebody else on that video today, which I can kind of talk about later. But the hate mail has been real recently. Um, so that's kind of hilarious. Nick says, uh, sup to Trev. Good to see you, Nick. What's up, man? Thank you, Anthony. Great to see you as well. Adriana's in the house. Hey, y'all. Lone Wander says, uh, how drunk was Cam? <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Yeah, actually, last night wasn't so bad. I did sleep in this morning, but I actually was better than uh, some other streams. So that's great. Let's keep going here. Amy, good to see you. That was a fun flight last night. I feel uh, I'm happy that Trev and I kind of nailed it for the most part. That was a lot of fun. So thank you for doing that. And I've saved the rum samples for for uh, Sarah to try as well. I want her to give those a go and see what she thinks. It is pretty smooth, huh? I saw Richie's in here. Where's, where was that comment from Richie? Oh, goodness. Oh, lots in the chat. Holy cow. Hey, Cameron, good to see you. Richie, DC. It's definitely not Slipknot. I wish it was. I would get taken off of YouTube. Focus is off a bit. Um, maybe, I think it's all good now, probably. Cheech, you again? <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Feel free to bow out at any time. <laughs> I know I've been on here too much recently. Keep going. Carl's in the house. Good to see you, man. Cheers. And I think I've got it covered. Mr. Whiskey Shits. Hello, hello. Awesome. Freaking awesome. So 25 are in here right now or so. Um, go ahead and like the video if you haven't already. Let's get a couple more uh, people in here. So just drop a like on the video nice and easy. And if you haven't subscribed, hopefully by the end of the night, you'll give a little subscribe. But uh, yeah, so we're celebrating 500 subscribers. That's pretty cool. This week, my Elijah Craig Barrel Proof A121 video took off um, totally organically, I think, which was amazing. I think it was popping into enough people's, you know, recommended playlists or whatever. And within a couple of days, I've gotten an, an extra hundred subscribers and like, uh, several hundred more watch hours, which has been really helpful as I continue trying to get monetized and all that kind of good stuff. So I figured we'd have a little celebration tonight. I mean, I don't have party streamers and hats and everything like that, but I, I have a couple of cool things planned here. I was going to do a giveaway, but I just don't quite have like the bottles in the bunker right now to do a, a really nice giveaway. So that is coming. I don't know when exactly I'll start doing those, but we will see. Um, Matt Porter in the house says, in the car, but listening in. Thanks, man. And uh, good to see you. Can't wait for next Friday. I'm going to be on Matt's channel next Friday, March 5th, with Trev Wilson for part two of our blind tasting head-to-head. -head. This one was picked by Matt Porter. And last night, obviously, was picked by Amy over on Trev's channel. So it's going to be a fun one next Friday. So thanks for tuning in, Matt. It's good to see you here. <laughs> I think Cheech is overdosing on drums and drams. <laughs> That's okay. Jay is in the house. Whiskey cheers. Surprised you survived last night. After the uh, chugging the, the still house, 
the swill house. I'm not sure how I did that. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking for the mean comment back now. Yeah, Aiden, I, I've gotten a couple really mean comments recently, which has been kind of hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, Richie says, mash that like button if you haven't yet. Yes, please do. So anyways, yeah, um, celebrating tonight with a couple of uh, a couple of cool things here. So my celebratory pour is this um, Chateau de Labade from Bardstown. You know, it's one of those I go to when I have a little occasion to celebrate. And I just got some new glasses here on these stems. These are from an Italian maker, Luigi Bormioli. Someone recommended, they're like 10 bucks a piece, so it wasn't that expensive. So I wanted to try these, they're brandy glasses, and see how they work for a brandy finished bourbon. Um, yeah, so I'm just buying a, buying a couple new whiskey glasses to see how they work here. Um, Jay says, don't worry about the giveaways, I'm speaking for myself, I'm here for you. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I do want to do some giveaways, I think it would be a lot of fun um, to be able to give back and, you know, samples, some bottles here and there and that kind of stuff, but... But yeah, that, that'll be on its way. I'm in the process right now of trying to deal with some Patreon things, get that up and running. I'm talking to people about merch, glasses. Um, what else? My designer about kind of redoing some logo things or at least making it more, you know, workable for some of these other um, applications. So that's going to be on the way, a Patreon. I'm not sure when exactly it's going to launch, but I don't think I'll wait till 1,000 subscribers. I think it's going to launch in the next couple of weeks. Um so, anyways, let me know what you're sipping on tonight before I keep yapping at you. Cheers to all of you. I'm going to have my first sip of bourbon for the evening, Chateau de Labad. So, cheers and thanks for being here. Oh, that stuff's so good. I like this glass a lot. Wow. Yeah. I'm, like, really picky about whiskey glasses for whatever reason, and I'm just not so into Glen Cairns. So I've been trying to find some different stemmed glasses just to see how they work. And the size of this one, it's not too little. It's like uh, 5.75 ounces. And yeah, it's it's a great shape. It's a little more of a bulb at the bottom than a Glen Cairn. So let's see here. Okay, yeah. So a couple more things before I get started and let you know what we're going to be doing tonight. Um, speaking of Patreon and things like that, because I don't have one, because we're not, uh, I'm not monetized and I can't do super chats. I thought because it's a little bit of an occasion, the 500 subscriber milestone, you know, tonight celebrating that, I would throw up this banner here, and I feel weird about it. No pressure at all. But if you want to buy me a dram, if you want to tip five bucks or whatever, if you've been a, a supporter of the channel. I would totally appreciate it, but no pressure at all. Um, my pay, my PayPal and my Venmo stuff is down there. But again, I just thought I would throw it up there um, because I don't have Super Chats available. So just for tonight, and then that'll obviously become more of a thing when I do get monetized. So thank you all so much um, for being here. Tom, good to see you. Thanks for stopping in, man. And uh, Stanley Wags in the freaking house. Great uh, live with Trev last night. Congrats on 500. Hope to catch up so I can be in the same graduating class. That's I, I've never thought of it that way. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, we have to collaborate, Stanley. Um, we'll make it happen in March. I think March is going to be a big month for collaborations here on the channel. And uh, how are you feeling, man? I know you weren't feeling so great yesterday. Are you are you feeling better right now? Um, you said you couldn't keep dinner down. I felt really bad for you last night. Yeah, Cheech said the same thing. Yeah, man, hope you're doing all right. Um, so yeah, okay, so we got the tip jar down there, um, checking my list here, celebrating tonight. Yeah, and I just, you know, one thing I wanted to say before I get going here, guys, is just thank you to all of you, um, especially the people that have been here since day one or day seven, you know, the early days of the channel, which is only a couple of months ago. I appreciate it so much. You know, the music uh, world that I'm in right now is still mostly shut down with the pandemic, and... Honestly, I've been dealing with some stuff on that side of things, on the career side of things, with some really nasty people recently. Um, just people not being so nice. And uh, to me and to one of the companies that I work with. Um, and it's just some misplaced anger. And, and I just wanted to say, like, this bourbon community has been so incredible. I look forward every time I get on here, I get on someone else's live stream. Uh, it's just amazing. And I, I can't thank you all enough for the support. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. I'm not doing this to make money, obviously, but 
um, you know, as I, my, my career and what, what's going on over there is shitty right now. And when I get to come over here and just hang out and see everybody um, jump on streams, it just makes my day. So thank all of you um, again. Okay, well, what we're doing tonight here is um, two different things, two different flights. I couldn't come up with a good idea of what to do. A lot of my bottles have been lost in transit for the last week. So I wanted to pop a few new bottles, but they're just not here yet. So I'm, I'm going to do that on Sunday on my Scotch Sunday live stream. So tonight, two flights. Number one, a blind flight from my Sarah. A little bit of an extended one. We have four pours. We've been down to two recently. So I'm going to do those first. And then you see all the Elijah Craigs back here. Because I put out the video of A121, and I put it up against my three other favorite batches, C920, B520, excuse me, and C919. Other people called me out and said, hey, you probably shouldn't have put this next to your favorite batches. Okay, okay. So tonight, I have a five-way blind with the other batches of mine. So I have A121 in there, but it's going to go up against C918, A119, B519, and A120. And I think, I think that's it. So I have a, a five-way blind that we're doing tonight to see if, you know, the A121 comes out on top or close to the top of the other batches that are not necessarily my favorites. So that's what we've got going. Sarah's flight and then my Elijah Craig blind flight. And then we're going to call it a night. And that will be it. Peter says, I uh, got the same glass at the thrift store uh, for 49 cents. Cut crystal. Nice one. Nice, man. And good to see you here. Thanks for tuning in. Adriana says, good to be uh, interesting to see what you pick to drink to celebrate something. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Chateau de la Bot. I mean, that's my go-to for right now. That or maybe like a cigar blend. I don't have any B-Tac or any, you know, Pappies or anything. So usually those are the things or like some of my Dusties, like old granddad from, from 83. I love those. <laughs> Nick says, the mean people are probably vodka drinkers. Probably, right? Uh, Wag says, still not feeling great, but wasn't going to miss it. I appreciate it, man. But if you got to duck out, you know, you got to take care of yourself. So <laughs> Chris says, send this man some money. <laughs> That's funny. Is he looking to get slammered? Oh, I'm not going to get slammered. I'm, I hope not, at least. Cameron has never said this, but I think he's a proof -stitute too. I am a proof -stitute. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Uh, you went back and you visited Woodenville, decided you're wrong. Sorry. Because of, yeah, I just don't like it. I don't know. There's something weird in there, latexy almost, about the Woodenville. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'll come back to this Chateau de la Bod in this fancy schmancy glass. We're going to go ahead and get right into it now. This blind flight from Sarah in the uh, in the old Black Glen Cairns, which I love. So, again, four pours here. Let me hold up the test card to make sure. Yeah, that's great. Aiden, if, I think, again, I think this was your idea. The black cards with the gold writing. Killer, man. This is a game changer here. So let me get these all out in front of me. And we'll get going. How many of you were checking out Trev's stream last night? <laughs> that was a fun one, but God, we went for four hours. That was the longest stream I've ever done. And it was, uh, it was a lot. <laughs> Dude, the black glens are friggin' awesome. I love them. And I have the one golden glen, which is cool, but the I like the black so much better. And they, they've been sold out on and off online, so it's it was hard for me to get them. It took me a few weeks for them to come into stock. Life's too short to be mean. You're right, Aiden. I think the same thing, man. But I, I try to kill them with kindness. You know, you get the hate mail and just well put together response and say cheers at the end and bounce out of there and hope that those people turn around. That's kind of my, my uh, method there. All right, number one, I'm going to go ahead and hold it up. This is what we have in glass number one here. Cool? So, uh, you know, I try to guess what, what is it? Distillery, proof, I can't even remember. Distillery, proof, age, um, you know, mash bill, whether it's bourbon, scotch, rye, whatever, and then the actual bottle itself. So I try to do it out of five points for each of these, but the you know, it's all made up and the points don't matter anyway. So that's number one. Let's see what we get. All right. It's got a really pretty decent proof on here, it seems like. 
I'm I'm thinking this is a scotch. This is smelling pretty scotchy to me. Let me know if you guys need to see the uh, the old card again. Cardigan? Card again for what the pores are. Yeah, a little bit of um a little bit of uh, like vanilla frosting on the nose here. Oh, I know. Adriana, that it does make me miss that. That was one of my favorite shows growing up. Peter, I've never had a black art bottle before. Um, I've heard that that stuff is amazing, though. But four hundred dollars a bottle—that's a lot, you know. Oh, Stanley, you're going live tonight at eight. Holy cow, man! Eight, eight your time. Um, yeah, gosh, take care of yourself, man. Don't don't hurl on a live stream. That would be bad. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take a sip of this and, and then you know kind of go from there. the heck is that that tastes so strange maybe that's not a scotch that that is the weirdest thing there is a ton of spice and a ton of proof there and a lot of sweetness but it I'm not so sure that it's a scotch <laughs> Amy says, please don't say soy sauce. Definitely not soy sauce. There you go. That's that's what this is, but this is confusing to me. Like, it's scotchy, but it also reminds me of maybe like a finished bourbon, but I don't know what, I don't know what I have that even tastes like this. Yeah, there's some, I feel like I'm getting some rye spice on here. Like some, there's definitely some black pepper going on. Um doesn't seem old at all. There's not a lot of oak or anything like that. What is that? That's so strange. What did I do? What did I do that Matt Porter does? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my gosh, Chris. Dude, thank you so much. I just got your... I just got your tip, man. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. That is amazing, dude. And thank you, Richie Z. Oh my gosh, guys. I really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. You guys are amazing. And Chris, most of this is your fault. You're the one who got me that initial rush of subscribers when I was down at like 100 or something, you know? I think I got 80 from jumping in on your stream for 15 minutes. It was crazy, man. So thank you so much for uh, for being so supportive. Um, and I hope your nipple's okay from from earlier this month. Oh, Lito in the house. He made it. Hey, man, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Thursday, hope uh, your Thursday night's treating you treating you all right. Did I say what the heck is that? <laughs> I pulled a straight up Matt Porter. Okay, well, this one has a, has some, um, some really sticky, like I said, vanilla icing or vanilla frosting. Like, it's got some sticky sweetness in here. Very sugary. It's It's got honey flavors in here, but it's not like a Buffalo Trace honey. It's not that light. It's like a really sticky, dense honey flavor. One more sip. And it's kind of granular. Like the the there's minerality in the texture, not necessarily in the taste. If that makes sense. Yeah, very, very sweet, but mouthwatering. A lot of rye spice in there now that I'm this has got to be a finished bourbon. This has got to be a finished bourbon. There's no way this is a scotch. I'm not getting maltiness or barley sugar sweetness in that. Um, I have an idea of what that could be, but I'm going to come back to it before I kind of say anything about it. But uh, I do have an idea of what number one could be. So let's go to number two now. You're very welcome. You've earned it. Thanks, man. Dude, and um, yeah, I'm, hopefully you and I can do something together soon. So here's kind of the deal with the channel right now is... Um, a week from tonight, I'm not going to be doing a live stream because it's my first rehearsal uh, with an orchestra here in Ohio. I'm premiering this new uh, this new percussion concerto that was written. Um, it was written for me over the last year, year and a half or so, and it's finally like we had scheduled to do it now in the pandemic a year and a half ago, 
and it's still going to happen somehow. There's only going to be 118 people in the audience instead of, you know, the um, typical like 1200 or whatever that the hall seats, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's going to be live streamed and everything like that. But I'm really excited. And the first rehearsal is next Thursday night and then kind of sporadically throughout the month of March. So I'm going to be a little bit on and off from now until mid-March, basically, because I'm really going to be preoccupied with that. I just finished learning the piece a couple of days ago, and it's crazy as hell. <laughs> um, and I just want to make sure I take care of business there first. So I'm doing Matt's stream next week. I'm doing a Scotch Sunday this coming Sunday. And then it's going to be a little hit, hit and miss, maybe one video per week and a live stream like every other week in March, just to try to make this all work out. So I just want to let you all know that. I'm a little bit AWOL on Instagram and Facebook as well. It just is what it is. There's not enough time in the day. <laughs> so uh, Richie says, uh, yeah, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate that. And uh, Aiden just sent a small something. Thanks, man. You're awesome. You're freaking awesome. Cheech says the black page. It is the freaking black page, man. So it's a 25-minute percussion concerto. And it's uh, I'm playing marimba, vibraphone, glockenspiel, xylophone, and then a, a, a setup with five toms set of bongos, kick drum, concert bass drum, and crotales. So it's the whole kitchen sink in this setup. And I'll be posting some videos here soon of me kind of practicing through some of the sections. It's a badass piece, but it is really freaking hard. All right, let's go to uh, number two. Let me show you all what's in glass number two. Can't remember if I already showed you or not. It's too early to forget things. Okay, here we go. Now that's got to be a scotch. Yeah, definitely got to be a scotch in here. A little rubbery. Oh, sherry influence there. Mm. But but high proof. Sherried, high proof. A little bit of sulfured sherry, a little rubbery sherry in there. It's not not great quality sherry casks. But still a solid dram. It's a little bit like Stark going from number one to, to number two right now. Like it's completely different worlds. Um, Cheech says, is it, is it solo? Yeah, so it's me as a as soloist with an orchestra playing, I mean, you could call them background parts or accompaniment, I guess. So the piece is just a full orchestra piece with me as the soloist out front. Um, and obviously with the pandemic, the orchestra has to be reduced in size just a little bit six feet apart on stage with barriers between people. So it's going to be a, a weird thing. I don't even know. I might have to wear a mask when I'm performing. I'm not sure yet. Um, people can, I can hide my uh, scared facial expressions then if I get to do that. <laughs> Nick says, Glockenspiel? I got I got a Glock in my rock. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, Jay, thank you so much for the tip, man. You are, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And, uh, and Stanley Wagner coming in as well. Thank you, man. You guys are friggin' awesome, and I really appreciate it. I can't wait to have a Patreon also so that we can do, like, tastings behind the scenes, and I can kind of post some behind-the-scenes clips and just different stuff. I have a lot of really fun ideas for Patreon, and I can't wait to do that. An excuse to make some more content, you know, and more fun content, not just reviews and stuff all the time. Yeah, number two, high proof, probably around 60% ABV, sherried, young. So I'm, I'm feeling like this is like an eight-year-old single malt. Yeah, I have an idea of number two as well, but we'll come back to that. It's seeming like it could be my Glendron, well, no, it's not my Glendronic single cast because that's a 19-year. It could be my Aberlar Abonad. Um, that's what I'm thinking that it would be. And Bubble Bath Bourbon says that looked pretty chipper for staying up so late last night. Yeah. Um, I think I woke up, I, t Trev texted me this morning. He texted me and I like just rolled out of bed at 11 or something like that. So I woke up at seven when Sarah got out of bed and she was like, she tried to wake me up and I was like, no, not now. <laughs> and so I rolled over. Um, I still got a good bit of, of work done today because I basically worked from noon until eight and now I'm here. So I feel fine about it, but yeah, geez. Yeah, I'll wear a hazmat suit at the front of the stage. The trumpets are going to be blowing their air towards me, so it's going to be a COVID fest. 
<laughs> Ben's got hot cross buns on lock. What's up, man? Good to see you in here, Ben. That's hilarious. And cheers, Rick. Thanks for stopping in. Great to see you. Get back at it for next week then. Our, uh... Oh, okay. This Maybe it has to do with the fundraiser for um, Scotch Trooper. But uh, Stanley, man, thank you so much for that tip. That was so generous, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed to Stanley's channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go subscribe to him on YouTube. Uh, like or follow his Instagram page, all that good stuff. Um, it's always a good time hanging out with the wags. So that's awesome. Edward, good to see you, man. Cheers to you. And yeah, Amy, you said it. Please hit the like button. Uh, get some more people in here. Looking sexy, Cam. Great job yesterday. Nah, Shane, I lost. I lost by a freaking, what, two, point or two points yesterday? I'm so bummed. <laughs> but thanks, man. Thanks for stopping in. Last night was hilarious. It was a total blast. Okay, pour number three of the first blind flight here. Here's what we got in glass number three. Let's get down to it. Let's see what the heck Sarah did here. She said she was very proud of her flight tonight. So we'll see what that means. Ooh, that smells good. That's got some uh, some funk, some warehouse funk in there. Adriana coming in with the tip. Thank you so much. That's amazing. If you guys haven't uh, checked out some of the videos that she is making uh, on the trail, check that out. You know, like all of that good stuff. Subscribe to everything that everybody's doing. But Adriana, thank you so much for that tip. That is amazing. Oh, Amy, I missed yours. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Amy. I'm trying to get my notifications back up on my phone here. <laughs> yeah, I'm making sure I don't miss anybody. Thank you, Amy. And Jay, again, thank you as well. You guys are freaking awesome. Jay says 877 mash now. <laughs> That's hilarious. Whoa. All right, so glass number three. Kind of a low proof here. Definitely bourbon, but it is funky as hell. Like tons of like sour, funky, tannic oak going on in there. Wow. Okay, gotta, I got to keep up with the chat. Cheers to you, Mike. Thanks for stopping in. Um, 1318 Shelby says, new to the channel, saw you on HBR. What's up with the googly eyes? Those bottles are judging me for drinking several of their friends. That's hilarious. Here, let me grab this. This is uh, the googly eyes are a thing that my fiance did. So <clears throat> some of the other people here who have been here for a few weeks have seen the googly eyes uh, thing develop here. I'm sure I'm gonna have a t-shirt with some googly eyes on it related to bourbon. But uh, my fiance googly eyes all my bottles and then these came in the mail. So, you know, it's pretty hilarious. Uh, Rob, man, what's up? Congrats on the subs on the way. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked about it, man. Thank you. Thanks for stopping in. And Rob, you're one of the OG supporters of the channel, man. We I can't wait till we can sit down and have a couple of glasses of whiskey together. So I can take these off so I can see. No soy sauce. None tonight. She promised me that no kitchen condiments, no beef broth. I said I, we had we made some burger patties the other day. I said you should save all that grease and uh bottle it up and put it in a blind flight. <laughs> oh, thanks, Chris. Awesome. Yeah, I saw you tag me in something, but I didn't have a chance to look at what that was. So that is amazing. Thank you, man. Yeah, we got to get it going. Edward says, uh, Jason and me, Jason and Trev should have a drum off to see who can be. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Cheech as well. I again, I keep saying this. When my things settle down a little bit more with this upcoming performance, I'm going to get in touch with everybody and try to get a, a, a cool Drummers of Whiskey Tube project going. I think it would be really cool. Aiden says, weird to feel like an OG. Yeah, man, you are one of the friggin' OGs. You've, you've, hung, you've hung with me through the good, bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Robbie Cross, uh, good to see you. HBR sent me, hello all. Nice to see you, man. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> the only Drams account. <laughs> mm. So tasting notes-wise on number three. There's a little bit of nuttiness in here, but it's not bad at all. It's not too sharp. It's nice and creamy, creamy mouthfeel here. Kind of, kind of a peanut buttery thing. There's some dark cherry in here. Not a lot of like vanillas. Not a lot of bright flavors or or rye. Nothing, nothing too sharp in here. Mm. 
I'd have to think that this is a Knob Creek 12 year. It's got that 100 proof feel to it. Nice finish. A thinner mouth feel than I would like. But the finish is great. The flavor profile is great. And again, here's what is in the glass. But I'm thinking it might be a Knob Creek 12. Um, that's to be determined and, and we'll come back to that. I don't think it's old enough to be the Wild Turkey Masters Keep Bottle in the Bond. But it could be. It could be that. All right, and now let's go to the final pour of this first blind flight. Pour number four. <laughs> Trev says, what's going on, everyone? Hey, man, good to see you. Yeah, Knob Creek 12 is a killer pour. Great value. I mean, I, I, I wish, and we can all wish it was 50 bucks instead of 60, 65. But with the store picks kind of going away now, the 12 is, for me, the best option. The 15 is not $40 better than the 12, you know? But that's, I mean, that's just me. It's a great pour, but I, I just don't want to spend the 100 bucks on it. All right, and now glass number four. Here's what we've got. Okay. Let me know if you need to see any of those again. Let's check this out. <clears throat> All right, so this is a scotch. It's so jarring to go from bourbon to scotch, back to bourbon, back to scotch. It's like, it's tough for me to do that in one sitting, you know? This one smells like there's not a lot. There's no sherry influence that I can detect up front here. I might change my mind after I take a sip. Pretty light. Light fruits, floral, um, confectionery sugar notes. Those are the most generic tasting notes ever, I know. I don't think it's Cuddy Sark. I don't think it's that bad, but it's something that's really light. Let me try it on the palate. Cheers. That's better on the palate than on the nose. It's really thin, low proof, 43% tops, in my opinion. Um, maybe a hint of smoke in the background as well. So <laughs> uh, Aiden says he hated the 15. Yeah, I didn't hate the. I tried a sample of it um, from Nick, who, who might still be in here, um, Kona Jams. At, at Nick's house, I tried a sample of the Knob Creek 15, and it was, I mean, it was a solid pour. For, for 100 bucks, maybe not. I would take the 12-year. It's actually got a little bit more of like a youthful sprightliness, you know? You know what I'm saying. The 15 was a little just too heavy, a little dull on the palate. It needed extra proof, I think, to kind of spice it up. Yeah, Trev, I thought last night might have killed us too. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we uh, survived that. Especially if it's peated, says Bubble Bath Bourbon. That was a reference to something earlier, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I, I think it might be over-oaked based um, on the proof. The proof to oak ratio might might be kind of why people have an issue with it. If it was higher proof, it'd be better. And also, if you guys haven't liked this video, please just drop a like down there. Not going to hurt you. Thank you so much. Hmm. Number four could be a Buna Haben 12. Because I'm getting a very slight tinge of smoke on the background. There's something kind of coastal highlands about this, though. Like, it's not a Klein Leash 14. It doesn't have the waxiness. I don't think it's a Dalwini 15. But it has a little bit of that coastal flavor to it. And the profile is, is taking me in that direction. Ooh, almost, almost knocked that glass over. It wouldn't be great. Um, so Aiden, you were saying that uh, they had, you were saying they had consistency issues, huh? Zero sweetness on the batch you had. Yeah, I think some of the store picks can get that way too. They can just get really, really oaky and funky. I like that, but I can only have one, maybe two pours at a time from some of the more oaky uh, store picks from Knob Creek. So, you know. Uh, Carl, I, I agree. Like, this is the best option. Unfortunately, that's going to be harder to do with any decent age here soon, it seems like. Mm. 
you know, number four here could be Compass Box Spice Tree, but it doesn't quite seem like it's got enough sherry influence or spiciness in here to be that. So, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a partial reveal really quickly of the first three, and then I'm going to come back to number four. Let me just check in on number one again. Okay, and number one makes a lot more sense now that I've had some other whiskey at this point. Yeah, I think I know exactly what this is. Here we here we have it. I think this is the Nulu Honey Barrel Store Pick. 116 proof or so, 36% MGP rye that I just got from the Rural Inn in Indianapolis a few weeks ago. Boom, there it is, Nulu. So grab that bottle real quick. Yeah. Okay, 113 proof, that's what it was. But yeah, 56.6, it's four year, one month MGP. It spent 73 days in a honey barrel. Great, great dram, but it needs a little bit of water and a lot of time sitting out in the glass to open up because it's so young and closed off. It really benefits from some oxidation. So, okay, I'm glad I got that one because at first I had no idea what the hell was in that glass. <laughs> so we'll put that back here now. Let's see. Not familiar with Fry Ranch. Yeah, I've never had it either. I almost bought one from Sealbox today, but I settled for the Maddie Gladden store pick that Sealbox has. So I'm curious to try that. I've never had anything from uh, Spirits of French Lick. Um, what else did I get? Uh, Smoke Wagon, a Small Batch, and the Straight Bourbon they had there. And I only have the Uncut Unfiltered. I want to do a Smoke Wagon video. So I managed to snag those from Sealbox today. Yeah, Nick, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts, man. Okay, I think I'm all caught up on the chat here. Sweet. And Fry Ranch, I think, is out west. If I remember, re when I was reading the description of that, it seemed like a pretty cool operation. Um, oh, Peter White. Hey, thank you so much for the tip, Peter. I just saw that. Really appreciate it. Peter is buying me a dram this evening. Thanks so much. Really, really appreciate that, man. All right, so this is number two. And Peter, you've been a supporter since the very early days. This is number two, and I was thinking this was the Aberlour um, Abunad or Abuna, however you say it. Mm. Very, very high proof. And Shay Reed and Young. That's what I'm going to say it is. Boom. All right. Awesome. Two for two this evening. Let's keep going. Let's keep it going. Number three, I can't remember what number three was. Oh, yeah, I thought this was a Knob Creek 12-year or Wild Turkey 17. Um, this is going to be, a, I got to make a decision real quick. 100% Pure Mustard says, thoughts on Elijah Craig Toasted? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's one of the most different Toasted Barrel products I think that's out there right now. The finish really tannic. It benefits so much from some air in the bottle. I uh, I said that, and I think Scott from my bourbon journey said that on his review as well. It took three months or so for mine to really open up once I got it past the shoulder. If you don't want something as sweet as the 1910 or as, I mean, the double oaked is sweet, I think. Not as sweet as a 1910, but that toasted barrel kind of splits the difference both with flavor profile and with the amount of sweetness in there. And I think it's a great middle ground option. But it's exploding on secondary right now, and it's total BS because I don't think it's worth $85 a bottle. That's absurd. No, I would I would drink Double Oaked any day at that price point, you know, if you're going to pay $45 instead of $85. I'm going to go Double Oaked. So let's see. But if they did a cask strength version of this, now that would be something to check out. I would like to see that done. Stanley Wag showing some love there. Um, Edward's about to grill some burgers. 68 degrees. Oh, my God. I'm jealous of that. Hey, Cheech, thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Um, let me get caught up here. Amy says, I don't know, Cam. Maybe need to get you entered into the next. If they do that competition again, I'm totally entering. Um, I, yeah. I, I get I get nerded. I nerd out about the palate stuff and tasting. I love it so much. But, yeah, that would be a lot of fun to do that competition. I'd love to try it. 
Cameron, this is a neck pour of Fry Ranch. Not bad at all so far. 90 proof. For, is it the bourbon or the rye? I saw that Sealbox got a rye in recently, but they already had the bourbon. I'd be curious to know about those. Yeah, double oaked Aiden has grown on me a lot. I, a, a lot. 1910, not so much. <laughs> not a big fan of that. Okay, number three. God, this is tough. I think this could be the wild turkey. No. Ugh. I'm going to say the wrong one. It's got a little too much life in it. Here, I'll show you guys again. It's got a little too much life in it to be 17 years old. Knob Creek 12. Final answer. Ah, shoot. Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. Oh, Single Barrel. Huh. I would have thought it was a 10-year based on the amount of oak. That's very interesting. But I did get that peanut butter note, and, and there was a good bit of spiciness here. So, all right, I'll take that. That, uh, that makes sense, I guess. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting totally attacked now. <laughs> Trev, Trev whooped me last night. I know, I know. He beat me on the, the proof game. Uh, Stanley says, email me your address and I'll send you some samples. Um, it is on the about tab. Okay, man. Yeah, I, I hope I remember at the end of this stream. I'm notoriously bad at that. So let me write myself a note here on my uh, Word doc. Email wags. Okay. Uh, Bubble Bath says you got the Fry Ranch Rye. It tastes really good. The nose is kind of strange, though. It smells different than it tastes. Interesting. Uh, JG says, next slide, put your PayPal and Venmo links in the description. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm learning. <laughs> I, I might not do it every live. I kind of feel like, I kind of feel guilty about it, you know? <laughs> but it kind of is what it is. Jordan asks, hey, and Jordan, a new name in here. I think it uh, might be your first time, or maybe you've been lurking, but good to see you. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in. Thoughts on Barstown Secondary going forward? Think stuff like the Labod second batch? No, I don't think it's going to stay around MSRP. Um, when I was down there and I was talking to uh, the people at Bardstown, they were saying that this next batch is 10 times the size. Basically, the first batch of Labod was three barrels. So I think that was about 1,200 bottles. And the second batch is going to be 30 barrels. But even if the batch is 10 times the size, that's only going to be like 12, 10 to 12,000 bottles. I I don't see the secondary going down that much for it. I think the first batch of secondary might shoot up because the new batch, I have a feeling they're going to proof it down, but I don't know that for a fact. But they, 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 they didn't know at the time whether they were going to do that or not when I spoke to them. Um, but I'm, I'm obviously just speculating. I think the secondary will stay around 350 to 400. And maybe the first batch will go up because it becomes more rare. Unfortunately, it's damn good stuff. And I have one extra in my basement. I sold my other ones that I bunkered because it just wasn't worth the money for me. You know, it's it's great stuff. But uh, Rock Guts says, hey there, lots of streams on tonight, hopping around. Congrats on 500. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Ed is going live at n in about 15 minutes. Uh, I'll bleed into that a little bit, but I'm going to try to not go too far into that stream. So hopefully you only missed the, the intro, you know, saying hello to the chat and all that kind of good stuff. So, Ed, thanks for, for stopping in, man. I appreciate it. Okay, let's keep keep scrolling, keep scrolling. But, um, Jordan, let me come back to this. You know, the other stuff on secondary, for me, the MSRP of all that stuff is so worth it. And I'll pay an extra 20 bucks usually for the discoveries. Um, but I was kind of pissed when, when the Bourbon Junkie said Discovery 3 was epic and then in Ohio, they disappeared the next two days. Like, that sucked, man, because that was sitting on the shelf, and I didn't get a chance to stock up, and I love the discoveries. It's amazing. Richie Z's got the bourbon. Okay, yeah, well, that's great, Richie. I think Sealbox had it for, like, 55 maybe. It's a little steep for me for not knowing what it's all about, but I might have to snag some of that Fry Ranch stuff then. Wow, if you can find it at that price... Yeah, that's an easy buy. That's an easy buy. Doug says, congrats on 500. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks for, thanks for stopping in. All right. So I was wrong about the Russell's Reserve single barrel. I thought it was a Knob Creek 12. 
the age, the funkiness, some of those things were in line or pretty close, but just didn't quite get there. Glass number four, this was the one that was throwing me off. Could be Glenn Morangy, could be a Buna Havan 12, could be a younger Glenn Farkless. I'll remind you all what this is. All right. Kind of just taking a look at the old shelf, trying to figure this out. I'm going to have to just kind of go out on a limb here. Let's see. All right. Maybe a Glen of Glenfiddich. I'm not even sure, guys. I'm not even sure. Darn. Could be a Tam Do. Ah, I don't know. I'm gonna say that for this one. Let me just try to guess a few things. Proof. Forty-three percent. Age. 10 years, I don't know the bottle, so I'm just going to have to, holy shit, Aberlauer 18, I got that wrong, yeah, okay, the black tea note is there, Aberlauer 18 always has a blend of sweet and sour for me, sweet flavors, sour flavors, a good mid-range fruit profile, but it's very thin, kind of uneventful, but a really easy sipper, and in my opinion, maybe a slightly better alternative to Glenfiddich 18. Um, but yeah, I would not have guessed this based on what I just tasted. I haven't, tr I haven't had this one in like three or four months. I would have never gotten that. So good job, Sarah, on picking that. Oh well. <laughs> Jordan says, absolutely agree. Thanks for your thoughts. I was lucky enough to stock up on Disco 2 and 4 in Illinois, but doubt I'll have that opportunity anymore. Yeah, I, unfortunately, that's probably the reality of it. Congrats on 500. Been around since your Disco 4 bit. Awesome. Well, that's great, man. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, the Disco 4 vid that I did, I did the one from the hotel room is what it was. And I don't think I've ever actually done a full review of it since then. I think I only did Discovery and Fusion Series 3 in a video. But yeah, it was amazing to be at the Bardstown facility and to, and to make that video in the hotel was kind of fun. Those were the early days. Jay says, forgot to say congratulations. Can't wait to see a thousand. Same here. Yeah, I think it's going to keep picking up steam, at least I hope at this point. Um, by the way, I should tell you all right now, tomorrow I am dropping my benchmark vertical video. It is a little bit of a longer video, unfortunately. It's going to be between 25 and 30 minutes because I had to taste six, six pours of benchmark. The editing has been a lot of fun for that video, I will say, and I dressed up in my uh, my tails that I wear at orchestra concerts, and I filmed it in my basement, not in this room. So you'll see what I mean, but tomorrow that video is going to drop um, probably around 6 p.m. Eastern is usually when I put new videos out. So keep an eye out for that. Next week, I have Bell Mead comparison between the new uh, 108.3 proof and the old cast strength. Doing that comparison next week, I'm going to have an old granddad bottled and bond then and now, current day versus 1983. And then I don't really know what's coming up after that because of how crazy my schedule has been. So we'll see, but that's what is on the docket for the next three videos. Just letting you know. Let me check out the chat. Oh, is Kelsey, Kelsey Dime in the house? Kelsey, I, I saw your comments earlier, right before I got on the stream. I apologize that I haven't responded yet on the YouTube comments, but um, thank you for jumping over here from, from the suggestion of Trev or from Trev's live stream that we did. It's great to see you, so thank you for tuning in. Yeah, Kelsey, I, yeah, exactly. Awesome to see you here. Okay, well, um, decently successful blind flight. Decently successful, I was close. Let's go ahead and get ready for the final part of the of the live stream tonight. Let me grab these pours. They're right behind me on the table here. And then we'll get off to the races. Again, while you're at it, if you wouldn't mind liking the video, of course, I've got the tip jar link up. Thank you to everybody so far who has sent in a little uh, 
buy me a dram tip. That's amazing. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. Can't say enough about how much I appreciate it. So, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, just uh, consider subscribing if you uh, are enjoying the live, enjoying some of the videos and all that good stuff. So more is on the way. All right, like I said, what we're doing now is a five-way blind. And I'm gonna move through this as fast as I possibly can because like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the stream, A121, my video compared it to my favorite batches of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Right now I'm gonna compare it blind to all of the other batches that I have that I don't consider to be my favorites. Those batches are C918, A119, B519, and A120. All right, so that's what we've got going on here. They are in a random order in front of me with the note cards again. That's how we're gonna be doing this. So I've got a shout out now. Uh, Nick, was this Nick Allen with this tip here? I'm not sure. It is, Nick, two out of four ain't bad, he says. <laughs> Thanks, man, I appreciate it. All righty. Let, uh, let me check out the chat here, and then we'll get going. Trev says, Kelsey was literally drinking with uh, Alive and Then the Flesh a couple days ago. So much fun. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Trev, I saw that you also had some hang at your house the other day, and that looked like a lot of fun as well. Yes, please sub. Please, please sub, everybody. Aiden says, uh, oh, gosh. All right, great. Here we go. Number one in the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof blind is this one. All righty, I'm going to take a couple little notes here as I go, and then I'm going to just basically rank these. I'm not trying to guess what's what. I just want to see what my favorites are. So put it here in a little Word doc in front of me. It'll make my life easier. Number one, here we go. You know what I might do? I might nose them all very quickly down the line instead of going one by one. One by one gets a little pedantic and, and very hard to discern because you're moving so slowly. Number one is, um, th these are all going to be great noses. How, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to complain about any of them. Number one's got a little orange marmalade quality to it. A little, a little rye kick in there, decent proof, not an overwhelming proof, I don't think. Typical brown sugar and oak qualities. Let me write that down just a little bit here. Orange marmalade, got some oak, some dark cherry, brown sugar, all that good stuff. Heavier on the rye spice. There we go. That's solid. That's a, it's very woody. And not even necessarily like oak funk. It's very just woody um, all around. Kind of in your face. So for what that's worth, let's quickly nose number two. Here you have in the number two slot. This is the batch. A little softer on the nose for this one. Kelsey says, Trev is a sexy man on YouTube. Cameron may give him a run for his money. Oh. <laughs> I'm not what the kids call smart. That's hilarious. Uh, Jay says, I'm going to crack my... Oh, please do. That is an inc that's one of the best batches ever. It's a very hot batch. It might need a little bit of time, but uh, some of those f um, dusty, funky notes are actually in that batch. I love it. Number one definitely has some funky qualities to it. Some of that wild turkey, old turkey funk. And number two, I don't know. Actually, number two is higher proof, I think. Not quite as like flavorful and rich in aroma for whatever reason. Yeah, more peanut butter on number two. Higher proof. not as rich aroma. All right, let's go to number three now. I'm gonna do a quick down the line. 
Richie says, uh, yep, buy, buy me some drams. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> Aiden says, I still have an unopened C919. I, if, if you haven't tried it, Aiden, you should crack it ASAP because I think it's amazing. Edward says, it's a hot, <laughs> C19's a hot bitch. It, for me, when I first opened it, I was like, what is this crap? Um, after a week or two, it really got so good for me. So, <laughs> what word did I use, Stanley? Oh, crap. <laughs> what word did I use? Whoa. Okay, so number three, whatever this is, is completely different than what I've had up to this point. Holy crap. I was hoping that some of these would stand out. The first two are like really closely related. This is totally different. Yeah, one is a freaking oak wood bomb. Number two is a little bit heavier on the proof. Some of that peanut butter, a little bit more um, fruitiness or cherry going on in there. But this number three, this has like a ton of clove, like really sharp clove and baking spice notes. Huh. Pretty cool. It's a, and it's also a little bit brighter because of those baking spice notes. Yeah, number three is killer. Number three has some medicinal cherry in there too, um, as opposed to like l the Luxardo type cherry. Wow, that is really, really good. Okay, let's keep going. Number four on the nose. Wow, number four smells like a damp forest. Oh, I said pedantic. <laughs> that's what, Stanley, that's hilarious. Oh, come on. That's, that's not a big word. Pedantic? That's not so bad. Edward did a side-by-side -side with 920 and 919. Last year's is better. Yeah, I, I, this is a toss-up for me. They're basically tied because I like them in different ways. They're totally different in my book. Um, but 919, after drinking a lot of D Dusties recently, uh, having never really had those until the last couple of months, 919 has a little bit of that Dusty funk for me, and I like it a lot because of that. And it actually, to me, resembles the older batches um, before they put them in these new bottles of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. That's why I like 919, but 920... It's just a damn good pour. Uh, you can't really go wrong, to be honest. So, uh, I haven't done this yet. Still waiting for C920 to open up. Yeah, okay, I, I don't remember the opening up kind of period for my 920, so. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, number four. Number four is kind of this damp like you're in a forest type smell, you know, damp woodiness. Um, some, some rye mingling in there with it, which is kind of contributing to that green quality that I'm getting that's reminding me of a forest. Um, you know, there, there are some fruits in there. It's actually a little caramelized apple in number four. Yeah, interesting. These are all just slightly different. Just a little bit different. And this is number five. Number five is hot, hot. It is bright and hot. Oh, yeah, Adriana, I think I missed it. What, what did I miss here? Yeah, number four's card is this. And number five is this. I know it's a lot of cards to remember. I wish I could put this up on the screen all at once. I might have to do that next. Have a have a master card, you know, where I can throw it up and it has all five in a row so you can see it now when I when I remind everybody what's in these glasses. It's actually a good idea. All right, and number five. They all start to mix together. Five has got some of that orange marmalade in here as well. Really heavy rye spice. Okay, let's go down the line and take sips of these now. And I'll do this very, very quickly.
Number five seems like it's almost 70% ABV. I mean, it seems really, really freaking hot. All right, here we go. Number one, here it is. My notes say orange marmalade, oak, dark cherry, brown sugar, heavy rye, woody. Very woody. So let's try it. Mm-hmm. Solid. Super solid. Very cinnamon. Very cinnamon and baking spice heavy on that one. A little bit of peanut butter. That's good. I'm going to go through this very quickly down the line so that I can remember all five. Mm. That's a great one. These are all going to be great. I don't know how I'm going to even choose. Very sweet on that one, though. Nice, like, uh, cane sugar notes there in the end. Yeah, two has got a little bit more of that wild turkey type profile with the peanut butter and that funk. Here we go. That is a peanut butter bomb. Yeah, that one right there is a peanut butter bomb. I have one over two right now. Yeah, I definitely have one over two, but that's and that's probably just a subjective opinion because the peanut butter thing is not necessarily my style. So keep that in mind as I do this. But that's how I graded A121. I graded it against my uh, favorite batches of this based on the fact that I'm not a big peanut fan. And I unashamedly ranked them with that in mind. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, if the flavor profile doesn't align with me, I'm just not going to... Um, you know, I, I'm I'm just not going to go for it. I just got a funny comment on one of my YouTube videos. So, sorry, I got distracted there. <laughs> Let me check the chat here. 100% Pure Muscle says, uh, 920 seemed to be more cinnamon forward than 919. I, I would have to go back and check that to confirm. To me, 920, excuse me, had more rye. Like, some of these uh, Elijah Craig batches tend to have a little bit of like a sharp green rye character. And it's usually when you turn the proof up. Like I think C920 had a pretty high proof if I remember. And when the proof goes up, I feel like the rye increases sometimes. So let's see here. Yeah, damp woodiness is kind of like musty oak. Yeah, Richie, I think you're right. Sometimes for me, it's like that warehouse oak funk is on one hand and then damp woodiness I'm thinking more of like, again, like you're walking through the woods or something when it's after it's rained. And that is a little bit different of a smell than like the wood that's been aging with bourbon in it in a warehouse. And typically there's some sort of green note that accompanies like rye when I'm thinking of damp woodiness. But that's like the way that I'm perceiving that, you know, for what it's worth. Everybody's different, obviously. So Night Wags. Um, if not there, you come out. Yeah. Hope you're feeling, hope you're feeling better, man. And uh, good luck on your stream tonight. I will probably be asleep at that point. Unfortunately, it is a late one for me, but you know, I'll, I'll do my best, man. All right. Number three on the palette. Here's a reminder. Interesting. Number three is super sweet on the nose. I had medicinal cherry clove on this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's almost very baking spice and clove heavy and also very sugary. Omega high proof. Number three is a killer. Oh, number three is a killer. Oh my God. Whoo, tobacco and sweet oak. Holy shit. That is incredible. Okay, so right now, let me go back to back three and three and one, because I have number two last out of the first three. Let me do number three and number one to determine a, a quick winner here. Mike Franklin, that's a possibly a new name in the house. Good to see you, my friend. Good evening to you. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. 
877 mash now. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. All right, let me do number one and three very quickly back to back. Mm -hmm. One is a really solid batch. And three is just better. Okay. So of the first three, it is ranked three and then one and then two. And let's see how three can compare to numbers four and five and then how all of that links together. Oh, man. I am rushing through this. I'm going to... Calm down just a second. I'm ingesting a lot of barrel-proof alcohol at the at the same time in a very short amount of time. <laughs> Jordan says, um, that's how it should be if your profile doesn't match the juice. It's nice to hear someone say it's not for them. Yeah, you know, and most of the videos that I do review things that for me are not on, uh, you know, on profile for me personally. I like to say, if I can remember to say it in the video, because I don't script anything, I just have a couple bullet points when I record my videos, I like to say, you know, if you like this, you will, this tasting note, then you'll dig this bourbon. For me, I don't like it, so I'm not going to rank this very high for me. I try to put disclaimers on all my videos if I can, but inevitably you forget sometimes, and you don't want to reshoot the video when you discover that you didn't do that in the editing process. And then people get mad, and it's like, well, you know, there's only so many hours in a day to shoot these videos. So it is what it is. But yeah, I, I try to keep it honest every time I shoot a video like that. And that's kind of just the way I do it. Yeah, Aiden, and that's the other thing. If something is straight up bad, I do try to discern that between me not digging a certain tasting note, which recently has been nuttiness for whatever reason. So, all right. Let's go to number four. Here's just a reminder of what number four is. Okay, that's the batch of ECBP. And let me check my notes of what I had for this one. My my nosing said, oh, this was the damp forest type woodiness, green rye, caramelized apple. Yeah, definitely some caramelized apple in here. Maybe some, maybe some cherry, but the, the apple note is very prevalent. That's a very flat batch on the palate. Great flavors. It actually resemble, resembles, in some ways, like the flatness is almost like a Knob Creek 12 profile in terms of that. But the taste profile is is not quite Knob Creek. So the, the mouthfeel and experience is kind of like Knob. But the I don't know. The whole thing is a little bit disjunct. It's not quite what I want out of an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Because it is flat. But it's a great everyday pour, possibly. You know, a higher proof everyday pour. That would be what maybe number four is here. The rye is really prevalent on the nose. Yeah, those those green notes. <clears throat> All right, one more little sip. That sip was a little bit stronger. All right. I got to clear the old palate. Um, Aiden says, never feel bad uh, for putting up a link to get paid. If you're good at something, don't do it for free. Yeah, I, I totally believe that. Obviously, I'm not some spirits industry expert or anything like that. Um, and I'm hoping to like read more about it, read more books, take different classes. You know, I've, I've heard good things about certain programs, some of those like week long type seminar programs. I'm really interested in doing some of that, saving up the money that I make, you know, playing percussion, doing the music thing. And kind of reinvesting it here because I'm I'm really interested in this whole idea of tasting and I don't know like like finding a way not to make it about the money or anything like that but just to keep diving deeper into this 
as the YouTube channel grows, finding more ways to make connections in the industry itself, not just online. Uh, so yeah, you're right. While I am no pro, I, I do understand though, like in my music career, it's like, if you want me to come in and teach a class, you know, if I'm going to come and be a, a guest artist at a college, which is usually a big part of what I do, you know, you, you got to pay, you got to pay me accordingly. If I'm going to travel out there and do a class and, you know, keep going on tour. Yeah, I totally get that. But for here, it's a little bit different because I'm just so new to the game. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to tread lightly, but I appreciate that, man. I volunteer to be your complaints department. <laughs> yeah, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Sick them, you know, some of the, some of the nasty comments are hilarious. Peter says, I picked up, uh, I don't even know how to say that. 30 year, the most I ever spent on a bottle. <laughs> Peter, how much did you spend? You got to tell us now. <laughs> Aiden says, my apartment's subsidized due to disability. Huh, I had, I had no idea, man. Um, I can throw you a couple bucks every once in a while. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, Adriana says, I don't know how you can get anything after so many different high proof ones. Yeah, it's like splitting hairs at this point with these Elijah Craigs. And what I've learned is if I go slowly through this, um, based on I'm, I'm a little tipsy, right? I'm not nearly like I was last night on Trev's live stream, but at this point, based on the level of alcohol consumption I've had, and based on the fact that these are all Elijah Craig barrel proof batches, so they're very similar in a lot of ways, the base profile, if I, if I stew on it or, or if I just meander around, I'll never ever figure out what's different between them. So if I give myself 30 seconds to call out five notes and go to the next one, that's the best way to do this for me is, is rapid. So you have to make decisions fast. I think that's important when it comes to, um, when it comes to tasting, you know what I mean? Like the biggest thing that having a YouTube channel has taught me is how to taste on the fly, not just construct a video and construct your 10 notes you're going to say on your bullet points on your video. It's like, you got to be able to pick something up blind and call it as you see it. And I think that's a really important skill that I've just learned, you know, so not to soapbox. I apologize for that. Austin Feltz, that's a new name in here. Good to see you. Now I have to come and see what Cam's all about. Hopefully it's not disappointing <laughs> or, you know, hopefully it's decent. That's all I'll say. Think of the tips as a whiskey scholarship. Yes, absolutely. Whew, Peter spent five. 30. Oh, on a long gone distillery. Okay, then maybe that's worth it. I know some people, um, is it Port Ellen or, or the Brora stuff? Some of those scotches go for like a, a ton of money. I think it might be Port Ellen. Aiden says, I have autism and depression disorder. Generalized. My mom was abused. I can't work as much as I'd like. Nope. No, man. No, I look, man, we all have, we all have our, uh, our challenges and everything like that. And I feel like, you know, I, I, I hope you didn't think that I was, um, you know, being uh, demeaning or throwing sympathy or anything like that. But I appreciate you telling me that and being so open about it. So, um, yeah, just no, it's good. It's good context. You know, I had no idea, but I appreciate you supporting the channel. And of course, I've, as I've always told you, man, like, I, I really am. I'm so, yeah, just grateful that you've been here since day one. You're an OG. So. All right. Peter says Brora is 2K, a Port Ellen is 4K for mid 30 years. Okay, yeah. So I, that I was thinking in the right realm that those are some of those long lost bottlings. Um, yeah. Hayden says I need to do more blinds. Would be really cool to find out what I really like. Yeah, it is an interesting experiment. It it really really is. And Amy, if any Virginia residents are here, get on on the lottery. Yeah, I've never won an Ohio lottery, but Sarah won me a Weller 12 a couple months ago, which was nice. <laughs> All right, I, I need to keep moving here. I need to keep moving. Number five. I didn't even have any notes written down for number five. Oh, I had orange marmalade. That's all I wrote. Oh, rye spice and very high proof. Mmm. Really high proof. Woo! Good God. <laughs> That's a little bit out of balance. Okay, that's that's great though. I mean, wow. There's something very savory about that one. Oh my god! If I, I wish I would have prepared myself for that. It caught me off guard. I wasn't ready. Number five. 
is this. <laughs> Holy crap. That's got to be like A120. A120 is one that I remember is very, very hot. That is incredible, though. Oh, my God. I got to dock it a little bit on being out of balance, you know, in its actual presentation. If you water it down, I'm sure it's a little bit better, but the way that it comes out of the bottle is what matters to me. So, um, I'll get to the chat in just a second here. So, currently, I have number three in first, number one in second, number two in third, and now I've got to put four and five in there somewhere. So, let's fit number four into this mix. Four's nose falls flat against number one. Falls flat against number three. Let's see about number two. All right, so number two was the peanut bomb. Again here. That's the peanut bomb here. Number four was the understated one. Reminding you that number four is this. Now let's see here. That's the peanut bomb. Yep. Which is just fine. And number four now. I got to give four the nod. All right. Let me check the chat real quick. Sorry, guys. Wow, I missed a lot. Carl and Richie are talking about uh, Corey Vrecken and Ugadale. Um, I would say both are must buy. Yeah, they're both great. Corey Vrecken for me is like chewing on like a damp rope <laughs> or like licking tar. Like Corey Vrecken is so dark and heavy for the Ardbeg profile, in my opinion. Um, obviously, Ugi is like way more balanced out with the sherry and all that stuff. You can't go wrong with either one of them, though. Ardbeg is just an all time great. Is Bora 38 year worth that price? Oof. Jeez. I, I I can't know that. I can't imagine anything being worth that price. We have 50 in the chat right now. That is pretty crazy right now at this point. 57 likes. Great ratio, but if you haven't liked the video, please drop a like right now. Um, Austin Felt scored an A121 this week. Loved your video. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And I'm curious to see where that falls in here. I have I have an idea of which one it is in this lineup. Um but we'll, we'll see. We'll see in just a second. Aiden says, uh, we all have our problems and I'm not special. Didn't think you were pandering or anything. I just don't want people thinking I'm fishing for sympathy. I'm doing great and I'm straightforward. Hell yeah, man. I mean, that's the only way to be, you know, straightforward. And, um, and you know, I, I think, yeah, I think everybody's dealing with, with their own stuff at some level, whether it's very minor or very major. So, you know, it, it is what it is, but uh, I appreciate you being so straightforward, man. That's awesome. Um, Lafroy Cask, I've never had that one. I'd love to try that. Uh, Hayden says, what are the glasses you use called? I like my Glen Cairns, but I love the shape yours have. These are called Highland Nosing Glasses by um, this crystal company from Germany, I believe. And I'll try to say it correctly. Stolzle, Stolzle, S-T-O-L-Z-L-E. Um, so let me put it in the chat for you. I'm going to miss the umlaut, unfortunately. But this is the company that makes them. For you, Hayden, I just dropped it in there. And uh, they're called Highland Nosing Glasses on Amazon. So check those out. Yeah, Peter says Jeremy's the only person I know with this bottle. I saw that Jeremy bought one of those. And it's crazy money to drop. But it's pretty freaking cool. Uh, Sherry did a blind of the 920 toasted and small batch. Toasted got the got the uh, last place. Yeah, all right. But uh, of course, I mean 920 is going to win that any day. That's a freaking great bottle. Keith says, uh, "What's your favorite prefix?" Oh, C, well, hands down C, and B for me actually might be last. Um, we'll see after tonight. Also, like after this flight right now, it's hard because I'm kind of breaking this up by talking to the chat and by writing notes and going piecemeal through this. I'm not going to totally trust my results tonight on what I end up with, but by and large, C is definitely the winner. 
918, 919, and 920 are freaking amazing. And then the B520 was a great batch, but 519 was not great. And I don't have a 518. So I, I actually can't speak prior to the last two B batches. So I'm not sure. Um, Amy sent us a sample, I believe, of B517 last night, me and Trev, and B517 was phenomenal. So it's a toss up, but C definitely wins for me. And then from what I've had, I might give A the slight nod over B, but but my sample size is too small. (laughs) DC, that's hilarious, man. Oh, that is hilarious. Um, <laughs> what did I just miss? Uh, Jay says, I bought a couple of them because of Cam. I will be getting more. Awesome, Jay. That's awesome. And you know the, the other glass you should check out here? Uh, you have to buy them in six packs, so it's about 50 bucks, unfortunately. The Luigi Bormioli um, brandy glasses. Yeah, phenomenal. I really like these. And again, I am buying up so many glasses right now so I can do a really informed video about whiskey glasses and what I prefer. Ah, I'm missing so many chats. Def, <laughs> definitely didn't pronounce it correct. Stolesley Lausitz. <laughs> That's probably how it is, right? Richie, man, I'm going to have to snag this then. If it's that good, I, I'm, I'm excited to try it. I'm, I'm trying to get into the Spirits of French Lick and, and the Fry Ranch stuff when it comes to craft distilleries next. So that's on my list, you know, and maybe the tip money tonight will help me pay for some of the the Fry Ranch stuff from Sealbox. That would be awesome. (laughs) That would be awesome. Chris, what's up? Sorry I missed your comment. Cheers to you. Thanks for for jumping in here. Probably a new name on this channel unless you've been lurking. So it's really good to see you in here. Thank you for for stopping by. Where the hell was I? All right. (laughs) I got to... I got to figure out where these all go now. So glass five is the one I need to fit in. And this is the super hot batch. Ma'am, number five is epic. Just a reminder of what's in number five. This is the ECBP batch. Wow, epic batch. Okay, my favorite was number three so far, so let me compare five to three. I'll go down the line, basically, to see how this falls into the order that I already have established. Mm. Three is more rounded out, more full. Five is a one-trick pony on proof, and the flavor profile is very sort of like singular. Three covers a lot more bases, so I have to still give the nod to three, and the and the finish on three is lasting forever. Ha- and it's not as high of a proof, in my opinion, as number five. Jordan says, check out the Turkish tea glass. Zero ethanol on the nose, only flavors come through. I need to check this out. I'm, let me write this down right now on my handy-dandy Word doc. That's what I'm looking for. Like, for me, the Glen Cairn gets too much ethanol too soon. What I mean is, like, sometimes 50% ABV can hit too hard out of a Glen Cairn, and it's like, what the hell? I put it in one of these glasses with a, a bigger bulb on the bottom, a slightly bigger volume, and it dissipates it better. So I like that. But I'm always trying to find that perfect glass, whether it's... um you know, for bourbon, for scotch, for a particular range of proofs. I'm really specific about that because I think whatever we can do to increase the experience when you're drinking this stuff, because we're drinking literal poison, you know, like we should be able to enjoy it at the maximum capacity. And I'm I'm so curious about how to maximize that. So, you know, again, nerding out here. Chris says, a newbie to your lives, but not your vids. Awesome. Well, thanks for checking it all out, man. I really appreciate it. And it's good to see you here. I do, Shane, I do have some Norlin glasses back there. I have the um, the black ones, actually. Yeah, and Hayden, the, the black ones look so cool. For me, the clear ones, not so much, because the material they're made out of is not great, unfortunately. It's kind of lightweight and, and chintzy, but the black ones just make up for that in their sheer look, you know? Peter, I have some, uh, is that pronounced grappa or grappa? I actually have some back there, and it's not working for me. 
unfortunately. Not for bourbon. Scotch, a little bit better, but mine have a little bit of an extra flared lip that I don't like. <clears throat> I don't have one, but Trev, if you want to send one along, I can't wink, so I fake winked. Jordan, I'm going to check this out. I'm really curious about this. Really, really curious. Okay. So, um, three is still better than five. Now, what else is next? One. Mm hmm. One has a great profile. A little more nuttiness in there than I originally thought. And five. All right. I'm going to put five in second place. I have my order. Thank you for bearing with me and being patient. I really appreciate it. My order goes number three, number five, number one, number four, and number two. So let me reveal these starting with last place. Last place is number two. Last place is A121. That means it got last place out of every batch of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof that I own, including the ones I did on my review video. Okay, that's not great. Someone's going to be mad. Someone's going to watch this live stream and write me an email. Ah, dang. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, let me, let me scroll up. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. Uta says, you'll have to use them for... And Uta, is this grappa or grappa? I'm so sorry that I'm like uneducated on this. I think it's grappa, right? 20% better out of one of Trev's glasses. That's funny. Yeah, those glasses are tiny. They're like three, three and a half ounces tops. So... Yeah. Let's see here. Um... Nick just got back. Columbus Blue Jackets lost. That sucks. Uh, Knob 15 was good. Sugary sweet with heavy baking spice and cinnamon over medium oak. Hydrate. You got it. I'm going to hydrate, Nick. Uh, but thanks for that. Uh, check back in on the on the Knob Creek 15. Yeah, Adriana says, I think it's grappa. Yeah, I think so too. I've never had any of that. I don't even know what it is, to be honest with you. But again, I'm like on a, on a glass buying frenzy to try to educate myself about how they react specifically to bourbon and scotch, even if they're meant for brandy, you know, grappa, cognac, armagnac, anything, whatever it is. Grappa, yes. Sweet. <clears throat> Bormioli, uh, Rocco Reserva is pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah, blind tasting never... Well, actually, Carl, I thought the A121 might not fare very well. I, I tried to go easy on it in my review video, and now I'm like, well, I don't feel so bad for putting it in last place in my review video if it got last year. So in uh, fourth place is glass number four. Let's see what this is. Oh, no. Really? Darn. Number four, C918. And I thought this one was very flat. I thought this one might have been B519, you know, because it was so flat on the palate. But A121, fifth place was 61.8. Fourth place was 65.7. Yeah, you can't you can't really tell what's going on here. So interesting. Um, what did I have in third? Number one was in third. Wow. So B519 beat C918. Lower proof and all. Jason Calori loves C918, and that got fourth place tonight. And maybe it's just because I went through these too quickly. Let me compare let me compare C918 and uh and B519. Hmm. B519 might be better. Yeah. I th I, I'm going to stand by that decision. I'm going to stand by that decision. Okay, let's get to the next one now. Give me just a second. 
in second place, <clears throat> number five, which was a hot, hot batch, and I think it's A120. It's A119. Wow. And I'm not very familiar with this. I haven't tried that much of my A119. Um, I said that this one, yeah, very high proof. Orange marmalade, rice spice. Yeah. That means the winning batch is A120. I got to rethink A120 then. Wow. It, it seemed to hit under the proof of A119, which is weird because it's higher proof. A120 68.3. 119 is 67.6. It seemed to hit under that proof. But it's such a balanced pour. So there you have it. A120 wins. And A121 came in last. That's all I'm going to say. That's amazing. That is amazing. So let me check the chat one last time. Then I'm going to bounce out of here. Couple of quick reminders before I go and before I check the chat. Um, let me check my thing here. Da, da, da. I'm going to pay. I have a Patreon coming up soon. Next couple of weeks, I'm going to get that off the ground and going. Next week, no live stream on Thursday night. I apologize. This coming Sunday, I'm going to be doing a Scotch Sunday. I'm going to be cracking open as long as they arrive. If they don't arrive, I'll have to punt and do a plan B. But I'm going to be cracking a Glendronic Portwood 10-year, which I'm so excited. I love Portwood uh, Port Finish Scotches. Cracking that bottle open. I'm going to be cracking a Glen Scotia Double Cask and a Delord 25-year Armagnac. My very first Armagnac. I'm so excited to, to, to get that one and try it on the live stream. I don't think my Glen Scotia Tawny Port uh, release is going to be here in time on Sunday. It says it's going to get here on Monday. That is the Cask Strength Campbelltown Festival Tawny Port release, 14 years old. If it doesn't get here in time, I'll, I'll do a separate Scotch Sunday for that because I can't wait to get that bottle. And I also have some Maddie Gladden on the way <clears throat> and the rest of the Smoke Wagon line so that I can do a Smoke Wagon video. So... Some stuff is coming up, and check out tomorrow my benchmark, I guess, horizontal, not vertical, video of the entire extended benchmark line that Indiana got. That will be dropping tomorrow evening at about 6 p.m. Eastern time. So let's check the chat one last time, and then we're going to bounce out of here. Thank you all for tuning in. It's almost like people have... <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I know you like the KC12, but I, I like it, but not my fave. It's not my favorite either, but it's like a good go-to in that line, especially once those older store picks start to go away. Nate says, congrats on 500, Cameron. Thank you, Nate. Good to see you here, man. And nice freaking pickup with that Henry McKenna today. Um, <clears throat> I haven't had my McKenna's in quite a while. I have two different barrels on on my shelf. So I'm going to try those soon and see how, they, uh, how they're doing. Uh, Shane says, tomorrow's my shipping day. You got packages coming. Nice, nice, nice. Let's see. Car uh, Carl, what did you say? See, told you so. <laughs> yeah, you did. That's funny. I uh, Trev says, I love Jason, but I also don't care what anyone says is better. The only thing that matters is what you think is better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Peter, you're right, though. I mean, it is skewing my palate a lot, and then you have to just go on instinct. <laughs> like... You know, you get a little tipsy. You're comparing so many similar pours. None of them are bad. The only one that I really didn't like is A121. But here's the deal. I put out a video saying Larceny A121 sucked. People got mad, right? I don't, And I don't care. I say that. I don't say that because I care. Like, it's just a, a fact. They got mad. That's fine. I put out a video saying Ezra 99 was, like, not great. I re-reviewed it. I now appreciate it more for where it falls in that $25 price range. But after those reviews, if I put out a video saying uh, Elijah Craig A121 is trash, people are going to come from my throat. So you all heard it here, and I'm not going to redo anything about my A121 review. It got last place anyways. But for me, A121, I mean, you, if you like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and you like some nuttiness, you're gonna dig the you're gonna dig it, especially if you get it at sixty dollars. But 
it's just not the best batch for me. And it's just the profile is out of balance. You know, th these others are just doing so much more. So Aiden's right. 2020 barrel proofs from Elijah Craig on a different freaking level. Yeah. Oh my God, Peter. Peter, you got the you got the legit pours, man. I I need to uh you're in Canada, right? I need I need to come to Canada. If you're not in Canada, I feel like an idiot, but I feel like you are. Carl, I can't be there on Sunday, gotta work. I'm ah, oh, all right. Maybe next time, man. I, I I do these Scotch Sundays and these second chance Sundays randomly. So it's it, it's nothing regular about that. Uh evening, what's up, man? Good to see you. Hayden says, how long have you been into whiskey? Was there any single product that got you diving in? Scotch got me diving in. I mean, <clears throat> I was always a bourbon drinker on and off. I'd keep a bottle of Elijah Craig or Woodford at home, and I would drink it on the rocks, or I'd drink it straight. It just depended. Um, but I didn't ever try to understand what I was tasting. I just liked it because it burned, and it was manly. You know, some bullshit. And now, uh, y y or more recently, I got into scotch took a lot of arm twisting from some really, really good friends. Basically, I went out and I toured. And I remember I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and a buddy of mine pulled out Balvenie Doublewood 17, Lagavulin 16, Lafroig. We went through it. Didn't like it. Um, a bartender locally that knew me gave me some different Johnny Walkers. I was like, I don't know. I, don't, I can't get into it. And, uh, and then Lafroig 10 was my gateway at some point. I got into Scotch. And then I converted to bourbon about about a year ago, you know, where like I did about nine months of tasting scotch very intently and developing my palate, spending four hours a night watching videos, tasting. I got obsessed. Then I spent, you know, the next year up until now developing my bourbon palate. So that's kind of my journey. <clears throat> Richie says, oh man, Armagnac, can't wait. I know, same here. I cannot wait for the Armagnac. Only if it's older Canadian club, because Trev said that normal Canadian club was not very good. <laughs> Aiden. Okay, Aiden. Um, hey, can you send me, because I am not going to remember this. Can you send me an email? I, I have some more sample bottles on the way. If you send me an email, I will send you some samples. Um when, when the other smoke wagon comes in, I'll send you the full line of smoke wagon stuff, including both of my batches of Uncut Unfiltered. And again, dude, I owe you a freaking Weller Antique. So just send me an email and remind me and I'll get that to you because my sample bottles are on the way. Yeah, that is, th yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's very hard and very painful. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Nick says, Watershed Apple Brandy and Nochino to split with you soon. Yeah. I can't wait to try those samples, man. And hopefully that'll change my opinion on Watershed because the rest of their stuff sucks. Um, but yeah, the Evan Williams 08 single barrel that we tried was was pretty freaking good. Keith, I remember you saying this the other night, I believe. And... I still have half the sample Amy sent me of B five one seven, so I need to get the other other bottles from that that year. I had an opportunity today to get them all for three seventy five total as a package, just was a little steep for me, you know. Whoa, 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 whoa! Holy shit! That is a killer batch. Batch eleven is the favorite, my favorite batch I've ever had. The one thirty nine point four proof. But I'm sure that 136 is killer as well. Nate said, uh, my gateway was Manhattan's, and I started deconstructing the ingredients. Yeah, I feel like we all have to get in with something sweeter, more palatable. But then you're right. Like, once you, once you flip the switch, I'm not going to say there's no going back. I'll still drink a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned or, you know, any cocktail, but... At this point, it's just like I'm just straight up, you know, going into to neat land with drinking my whiskey. Yeah, Peter, I um I had an opportunity to buy the Canadian Club 40 a couple weeks ago, and I didn't take it here in Ohio because I just didn't know enough about it. So, you know, if I had a sample first, maybe I would be willing to spend that money. 
No, Aiden, I do, man, because I told you I was going to get you a Weller Antique at cost, and I, st I literally still have not gone out of my house. The last time I was out of my house was when I played a concert like three weeks ago. <laughs> so I really, I'm going to get you a Weller Antique from here at cost. I promise you that. Started with McKenna. That's a great way to start. That's a great freaking way to start. All right, everybody. It's 943. I'm on here later than I wanted to be. I hope Sarah's still awake because I haven't seen her enough recently and I miss her. So I'm going to go see if she's awake. If she's not, that sucks. But I'm going to jump off here and get the room cleaned up. Uh, Sunday night. No. Sunday afternoon. A little tipsy. Not that bad, though. Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be doing a Scotch Sunday. Again, Glendronic Portwood. A Delord 25-year Armagnac. And Glen Scotia double cask as long as they get here when they say they're going to get here on Saturday afternoon. So I will see you on Sunday. I'll see you next Friday. ADHD Whiskey's channel with Matt Porter and Trev Wilson doing a blind head-to-head -head flight. And that's, that's about it. Tomorrow, benchmark vertical video drops at about 6 p.m. Eastern. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You freaking rock. Thank you so much. 500 subs. Let's get to 1,000 as soon as we can. And I'm going to end my night with batch A120 of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Cheers to all of you.